and three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is a Socratic Dialogue. Yes. Yeah. We are uh, replacing weekly roundups where we talk about four things. We just shoot for one thing because Vish has come up with the most intelligent way to uh, to effectively and efficiently produce these podcasts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we were doing like a lot of post-editing before, but now we're just doing like straight upload. Straight so there's no more music intros. Live, in a sense. Yeah, you, production. Probably, you probably missed those. Well, still pre-recorded. Yeah, no, no, it's pre-recorded, but I mean unedited. like... Unedited. We'll unedited. Unedited. Yeah. Raw, raw. So straight. because it's unedited, you might hear like doors creaking or like a dog in the background. But anyways, so last time we talked about where do we go when we die? This time we're talking about something just as superficial, social media. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... W- all right, so first of all, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, there is a, um, what do you call that? There's like, there's these clips on Instagram and I hear you guys talking and then it drove me to check you out on iTunes. So if that's how you came upon this, that's great. Uh, or alternately, if you're on my website mm-hmm. or saw an ad, you, you're probably driven somehow. But these are all superficial things through the guise of digital media. So I guess the real question is, how important is digital media, Vish? What do you mean? Like... To spread your message? No, just like in general. You know, like a lot of people nowadays, they get very caught up in like social media. I think like, well, that that was a great point because you're like to spread your message. And like, if you look at it from an economics point of view, then yeah, it's super important. But I think what I'm really... I mean, it didn't. It started more about sharing your story, right? True. Actually, all right. Let's let's go. That's a great great uh, point to focus on first. Like, where did social media begin? Right. So we grew up in the age of the internet. So I remember in like '93 when the internet came out, we got a computer. And there was like dial tone. <laughs> oh, then, like if you if you picked up the phone, you'd be disconnected what from a the time. God yeah, it was damn. crazy. And then you just be disconnected. And then somebody came up with cable. And then everyone's like, oh, my way, you got cable. Because then you don't have to worry about picking up your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you grow up in that time, it's like you got to see the evolution of the internet. Right. You know? And like a lot of people nowadays, they, they assume that like social media is just like the way it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, that's not the case. So do you remember your first experience with like social networking? I mean, there were so many before, right? I so mean, MySpace, fi- Friendster. Yeah, Friendster yeah. was the biggest one. I think I did use MySpace. I don't think I used Friendster. There was Friendster many. was like super Asian. Like that was for Filipino I think so. People. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, more Asians. I don't know. Necessarily Filipinos. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like Facebook was the biggest thing. No, yeah. no, but like yeah, for sure, for sure. That oh, one, yeah. that one's like that was a game changer. But let's talk about before Facebook. So do you remember before Facebook? I don't remember before but Facebook. But you remember MySpace. I okay, yeah, only because right. it's still kind of here. It's still yeah, okay, true. There. But like, what was the initial point of like those platforms? I don't even remember For, now. Friend, well, Friendster was, was all about like it was just like Facebook, where it's like you wanted to have as many friends on Friendster as possible. Right. But like, I remember when I first. So the the reason why I'm into digital marketing now, mm-hmm. fun fact is actually because of Friendster. Like, literally, because I remember when it, it, like, got really big, and then I would see all these people at school creating these Friendster pages, and, like, you were judged by your Friendster page. Okay. So I remember okay. this one girl, she had an amazing, like, Friendster page. It was so sleek, whereas everyone had, like, the, the standard themes, you know, the templates? But she, like, coded. Okay. So, like, her Friendster template was very sleek, and, like, nobody else had it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. Like, you know, you're, you're up on it. Because, like, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you're the only one with yeah, this because yeah, yeah. you had the coding knowledge, you right, know. Right, 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 right. To do this. And then it made me, like, look into coding because I'm like, okay, maybe I can create cool code, too, and, like, mm-hmm. create a cool visual page. Because I noticed that, like, the way I perceived this person was way different than I perceived them in real life. Obviously, she, like, she was a popular girl. So, okay. like, she was already cool. Right. But then, like the added bonus of her unique Friendster page Mm -hmm. was like, oh, you can even be more cool. It was, it was like, it was like a layer on top of your, your person. You know what I'm saying? So like, and then like you were almost judged by your Friendster page. 
because it's like we would see you like in person but then like online because like msn chat was like big and like oh yeah remember that it's yeah. like what was your avatar like and like we don't really do chats anymore but remember msn chat was like huge back in the day what do you mean you don't do chats we, no no like you don't have standalone things like msn chat was like just for chat right like everyone had msn chat well yeah yeah you know what i'm saying but now now chat got integrated with other platforms like you can dm people on instagram mm-hmm. you can like message them on facebook there's there's many ways yeah. to like contact them right but back then it was only through email chat services yeah you know what i'm saying the the anarchy days are like the somewhat. the rudimentary days were, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then like and then again like your profile photo really made a difference the name <laughs> there you know what i'm saying like like yeah. online created like a digital perception of who you really were right, right like right. you could become anyone yeah you know and i guess that's that's kind of what intrigued me and made me like go into that zone you mm-hmm. know and why i specialize in it today because like i was just like obsessed with it because it was it was unique you know it's right. like yeah, yeah, yeah it was like you you are you as a person but then you're also you're online you there weren't avatars back then like that wasn't even a thing it was just like you were you had like msn facebook i mean sorry sorry friendster friend yeah friendster. you know and then you were judged <laughs> Accordingly, right? You know, so like, did you have any experiences with that? Like, because uh, I was older than you guys, I don't think I. It's only two years, but two years made a difference. Though, two years did make a difference because when we were in grade eight, you were. Because it was school. only from you guys that I knew about Friendster. Like, I really. That's what I'm saying. It was like a Filipino thing. When we went to, when we went to, um, Pope, yeah. high school, like everyone had Friendster. Right. It was like the thing. If you didn't have Friendster, you were a loser. It's like you're you're not alive. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I did what did make one because of you guys, but like, I yeah. Don't but what was what was the purpose of it? It was futile. I think maybe like because we were kids, it was futile. But like, I'm sure people hooked up through Friendster. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I think that was the thing. But like, right. Like for us as kids, it was like it was just like our digital selves. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is Facebook and stuff. I guess we do do it through Facebook. What do you What do you think? No, I think we do. We still, like, have... But I think there's more websites now. Like, everyone's got a website, you know? No, they don't. No, like, all right. The, all right, you you're right. Not everyone. But, like, the more digitally inclined, you you start... If, when you get into coding and you get, like, good at it, yeah. you start to develop your own websites. Like, I know a bunch of people with their name as their website. Are they selling stuff? No, they're, it's just that... Like, I guess maybe it's in the business field. That's what I'm saying. Like, or, like, in the they, design field. Yeah. Designers, like... Creatives, oh, but that's different. People. It is a business thing, though. They're trying to sell something. For sure, for sure. Yeah, right. totally, totally. But what I'm saying is, like, it it became that because now you're judged in the professional world through your website. Like, if yes, yeah, you know, yeah, saying yeah. like, if I get a job and then I'm like, oh my. Well, it depends on the field that you're in. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So I think in that digital field, of course, that's where you put all your your portfolios of work or. Whatnot. Or just who you are as a person, because I've seen or a lot of people are. just like their yeah. bio, and I'm like, what was the point of the website then? Right. But it's what I'm really getting at here is like we started to get we're starting to get judged. Well, I guess we've always been judged by like our oh. digital self. Mm-hmm. You know, it was so prevalent when we were kids, and it just got more prevalent now. You know. Yeah, very true. Like even like video game avatars, you get judged by your video game avatar. That's why they <laughs> let you customize things. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, this is the world we live in. But to realize that it's fake. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, it, you, so that's where, I don't, like, I guess it, it was there before. Nobody really thought about it that much. That's what I'm saying. It was, right? it's like the boiling frog thing. Like, if you put a frog in boiling water and you slowly turn it up, they'll die because they won't know it's getting hotter. Right. You know? So it's sort of like that. Like yeah. when Friendster came out and like then Facebook and then like Facebook what it is now you know it's yeah. like it crept up on us yeah. we didn't really realize it and now like well because no one knew, didn't realize it and also we were young at the time so we didn't and then even the older people wouldn't know what we were doing totally yeah right? for sure and then now sure. it's come to a point so, where the same people that used to do it as kids now are older and ex- exactly exa- that's what exactly 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 and like what I think is super interesting is like so there's like a lot of like like debate not debate but there's like a lot of like controversy over social media platforms like oh you get you got like booted off twitter mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like you're right. you know like all those like like oh you got blocked off of um 
Instagram or something, and like it's mm-hmm. the end of the world. But it's like, is it the end of the world, or did you just like you just got caught too caught up too much in it? You didn't die, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one one of the one of the funniest things I heard, like I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast, and they're like, oh, like they banned Alex Jones, right? Mm-hmm. And then like Jamie, the guy, the producer guy, he's like, you could just start a new account. But it's like, nobody lost all my followers. I've died. It's like, you haven't actually died. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But are, are they allowed to do that, though? Like, to start a new account, but if they know it's you, then they can ban you again, right? So? So then don't use your real name. Yeah, I know. Like, you're just getting so caught up in the superficial. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm just saying, like, that would... Like, why hasn't he... Has he done one? I don't no, know. no, no. He hasn't done one. Oh, okay. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, you got way too caught up in, like, the digital. It's like... I get it, like, because you're looking at it as, like, a business. Okay, I lost yeah, my business. Yeah, I mean, it's more about his... Businesses fail all the time, bro. Yeah, yeah, You know what I'm saying? Like... Well, of course, but he's trying to make it... Still keep it afloat, right? Like... Yeah, for sure, for sure. But what I'm... What I think I'm, he's still doing a good job, in a sense, of making it still work, actually, by going on... on yeah, to- no, totally. Yeah, you still have options, but yeah. the thing is, you we're so caught up in it. Who who we are online, mm-hmm. we've, we've believed... I mean, I do it. Like I, I'm obsessed with it. That's it's like literally my job. Right. But that's that's because I'm like, I'm seeing my own vanity and I'm like, spinning it on its head. Right. You know, because I am so like, all right. So, look at your account. Look at my account. You mm-hmm. don't even. You barely post. <laughs> you they did it for a bit. You're like, that's ah, boring. And then like yeah. you have like so few followers. I have like thousands of followers. Yeah. And I post all the time. Yeah. It's like. But I know it's fake. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I know I'm playing in the make-believe. But how many people don't know that they're playing in the make-believe? Yeah, that's the thing. Right? That's what I'm saying. It, 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 I mean, especially, well, the thing is that also, the ones that use it a lot are also kids. True. No, no, but for sure. A lot of kids do. And then but a, also adults, adults don't understand. Yeah. Also adults don't really understand it. Like, no, like I get questioned like, most recently this guy's like, Hey, like, do you make a living online? I'm like, No, I have a job <laughs> and I freelance and I've right. got also projects. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. what you see is not what Right, yeah, that's the thing, right? It's an illusion. And yeah. w- one of my favorite parts about like when I when I work and then people are asking me about social media and stuff, the mm-hmm. thing I always tell them is like, What do you want me to make it say? You know, I'm like, honestly, can I be serious? And they're like, yeah, sure. I'm like, it's an illusion. This is not real. What I do is I play in the make-believe. So what number do you want to see? And I will make you get that number. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, but then people are like, oh, but you just know how because it's like not organic. I'm like, no, no, we can do the organic approach, but just understand it's going to take time. You can't market a bad product. Mm -hmm. So if you yourself are uninteresting, you're not going to get very many followers. Right. But it's like, what do you want those followers for? You know, yeah, yeah. Like I, I was like my own like little test run. I tried selling that photo book I made. Total passion, passion project. I yeah. have no intention of making money off of it. It'd be cool if I made money off of it, but mm-hmm. like that's why I have a job, right? But like I was like, okay, let me see if I can push people. If it's only a dollar, thousands of followers, only a dollar, zero sales. Right. Well, technically two, but those people were like family members. <laughs> so it's like, really though, you know, it's like, what? What is this for? Right. What is a high follower count for except for segregating different people or like ostracizing different people? It's like, oh, you you have like no followers, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does grant you an audience. Like thousands of people get to see my stuff, but it's like it's on a superficial level. It's on a double tap or no double tap level. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, even with that though, like, I do tend to see when if people are on Instagram, they just they're just scrolling kind of quick and then yeah, exactly make decisions very quickly on a hundred percent. So it's funny like when I work like big. Here here's a pro tip for everyone: don't write too much copy in your in your posts because people don't read it. You're right; they do scroll. If the image is good, they'll pause for a second, yeah. and if the words are short enough, they'll read it. Yeah. But if it's long, unless I'm heavily invested in it, I'm not gonna read it. Nobody cares. Right. And then that that's like telling of our society. It's like who really cares? You know, like does does that just mean that we don't care about P 
people in general, mm-hmm. you know? I think it may in some sense. Like, is it telling of our society or is it just telling of how we behave on the platform? I, I don't know. Well, pre- people, it's more, y- you're also like doing it on your own, like in a sense, like not being judged by others. So it, it is, could be more mm-hmm. like what you're natural, what you are like, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. In an online sense, like, Right, right. It's sort of like how you kill people in GTA V, but you don't kill them in uh, real life. Right. It's like there's a different behavior digitally than there is physically. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Or like how you're judged with other people who are looking at you versus only you. Like, like making your own decisions on some things. I don't know. Cl- clarify. Like what do you mean? Uh, no, because you're on your own f- device, right? Uh-huh, yeah. So, like, how you act, maybe that's how you are actually like, but if you're with other people around. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I know what you're saying. It's like, um, it's, uh, it's like the disillusion of, disillusion of, um, ownership or something, like, Mm -hmm. onus. Yeah. It's, it's like how if you single one person out, they're less likely to do something than if they're in a crowd. Yeah. Because, like, you're, you're, like, hidden. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. A- anonymity. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's true, actually. Yeah, because people don't take the consequences. But then it goes into, like, cyberbullying and stuff. W- one thing, like, all right, cyberbullying, bullying in general is terrible. Let's just get that out of the way. There are some pros, like we said, like, you you know, yeah. you need an obstacle to grow through, sure. Mm-hmm. But, like, why don't you just log off? Right. <laughs> you know, like, I don't understand. Like it's like if the comments in the if the comments in the comment section are super negative, just don't read them. Or remove. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, true. I mean, that's what uh, anyone that is somewhat famous, famous, yeah, on you hear YouTube, it all the time. But they don't read the comments. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be horrible. Yeah, and then the people that do read the comments, they get upset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I don't. It just like it perplexes me. So I guess all right. W- one thing you might be wondering if you're listening, it's like, so then why do you post so much? Right? Yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, with the bullying thing, though, okay. I, I mean, it, it's also kids. They're not, you know, they're at a different brain development. So to understand. No, no, but like, all right, so things, Tim right? Pool was talking about how people were like, kill Tim Pool. Okay. They're saying that, right? Yeah, but he's yeah. an adult. <laughs> no, I know, I know. What like, I'm saying is like, cyberbullying can lead to physical bullying in real life. Right. So like, it, just stop it. Like, it's, it's like trying to head it off before mm-hmm. it gets worse. Right, yeah. But, like, just don't be on the platform. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or be ready to deal with that, I guess. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think we need, like, social online education. Yeah, I think maybe they're doing that now in classrooms for kids. I think, I think they are, yeah. I mean, especially now, yeah. I think you have to. Because it's like... I just, I think people get so caught up in, all right, so two things. I think people get so caught up in what they think is real. Mm-hmm. And to that point, if you give a person a very small, it, it was in this book, uh, Catching Big Fish, uh, David Lynch. He's like a video, uh, he's a movie director. And what he said was like, he, he doesn't like a, like ultra HD, right? Okay. Because cause it doesn't leave room for the imagination. If it's not HD and it's like kind of grainy, or like it's kind of dark, yeah, like in shading, then people fill in the rest with their own imagination, and that's sort of like life. It's like you get these little snippets. So, all right, there's 24 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. All right, you're you're watching my 15 second story. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think's going on? <laughs> you know, what I'm saying you filled in the rest of the story yourself, whereas like I'm just giving you the 15 second clip. Right. Yeah. You know. True. Uh, yeah, if you don't, that's, that's, the, the that's, the, that's the thing. Yeah, that's what a lot of people forget when you look at you. You think that's what their whole life is like, but that's like it, yeah, totally. Hey, you know what I find? And too? they're only showing you only the best, the best part self, of it. Yeah, but they're not showing the rest of it. That's it, exactly all boring or it, whatnot. You know what I find too? That like the happier you look on social is often not the reality of the situation. So like you'll find very few pictures of myself online. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah. 
Well, <laughs> and even more so, you'll find very few of me having a good time. Now, does that mean that I'm not having a good time in life? It's like, no, I'm having such a good time in that moment that I don't need to pause and capture it. Right. But then the question comes, so why do you post so much? Mm -hmm. And I see it like twofold. When I post something that like is meaningful and inspirational, I've already seen that. And I'm like, this is so dope. I want to not only share it, but remember it. Right. You know, so it's like, let me cut this and like pass it on. Mm -hmm. It's like nuggets of wisdom. Right. Right. And then like, why do I post about my personal life and my stories is because like, I see things in daily life that I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I've, I've actually appreciated it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I want to encapsulate that appreciation by taking a photo of it. Right. In no way am I ever like, look what I'm doing, what you're not doing. Yeah. You know, I'm always like, look, this is dope. Go find your own dope thing. Yeah. You know? Right. That's funny. I, I got asked. I like, got, that's ten, like, like mm -hmm. even the ones that I have posted, this is exactly like, kind of like, like one of the stuff that I like. Nothing to do with me. Nothing. To, like, yeah. I mean, not like picture of me, but it is of me in a sense of like what I like. But Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And so then it's like, well, then how'd you get a bunch of followers? Like, well, all right. Bots are big. N not <laughs> oh, like, that's a, yeah. Yeah. You know, you like, there's get, tricks. Yeah. Hashtagging tricks, bots. Um, but like, it's also about like posting like content that you like. Right. So like when I post it, I'm like, oh, this is so dope for me. Mm -hmm. And then I just resonates with other people because like people like real recognize real, you right. know, yeah. you could tell when it's like you're doing it out of genuine inspiration. You're doing it for a sale. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked on like multiple accounts, uh, like social accounts. And like every time actually I got, I got asked this question and like I, I told them like, so like, how do you do it? And I'm like, you just post content as you as the filter. Do I think it's cool? Because if I think it's cool and I'd spend time checking it out, chances are other people will think it's cool and they'll spend time checking it out. Right. But if like you don't like it yourself, if it all looks like an ad to you, chances are other people are going to be like, it looks like a freaking ad to me. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are like marketing tricks. But anyways, yeah. Just don't get caught up in the illusion of thinking that I'm doing something more great than you're doing. Like, I'm sure you're doing something just as great, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I, I took on this, um, my upcoming position, and then we're talking about, like, uh, going out in the field and, like, you know, potentially, yeah. like, shooting and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, but I don't want you to, like, get too caught up in that. Like, you, like, it is a lot of desk work, too. Like, you will get to, but, like, not as much as you may be thinking. And I was like, no, that's totally fine. Cause like even in creating that stuff for other people to see, I'm filled with the inspiration to go out and do those things for myself. Right. So like in creating content that is inspirational, I've inspired myself. I don't need to go out and inspire myself. Like I'm doing it in the process. Like the work itself has become an inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Right. So, and it goes back to like when you see, other people's content and you're like it, you should look at it as like inspiration you shouldn't look at it as like a relative mm -hmm. you know like you're doing that I'm not doing that because it's like just go do something else yeah you know what I'm saying right right, right. to to like you're saying Com comparison is uh, I heard this comparison is the thief of joy mm -hmm. uh, Casey and I said I think okay. or no is e Elon Musk I don't know. I think it was Elon Musk. He was on, it was on the Casey and I said Elon Musk thing. And he was saying comparison is the thief of joy. And it's true because it's like as soon as you start going like I don't have that, then you have stolen away your happiness. Okay. Because it's like we have the potential for happiness right now in this moment. Yeah. We're, we're doing this podcast. This is enjoying, I mean, joyful for me. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I'm like thinking, oh, I wish I was traveling right now. Then I'll, I've stolen all of the joy from this moment, and I've placed it on something that I don't have. Yeah, and I won't. I'll lose the joy of this moment. Right. Yeah. You know. Of yeah. Of not yeah. Right. I That's know. why comparison is a thief of joy, because mm -hmm. in comparing, you're losing the happiness in this moment. Oh, very true. You know. Yeah. So would you say that like? 
would you say that like well i know what you'd say because you've told me this before but like the whole experience is the enjoyment yeah you know like yeah like when did i say that (laughs) Well, when I was going through that whole, like, nihilism thing, what's the uh, point, you know, because, like, life... Oh, uh, right. You know, like, cause what is the point? Like, when you start to realize that... It's funny, I had this conversation today. I was, like, I was talking to these two people, and they're, like, they're, like, how come you're so... <laughs> so funny. If you're listening to this, I talk about my life in these podcasts. Okay. So, surprise. <laughs> um, if you listen to this, thank you for listening to it. But, um, so, they're, like, they're, like, you're so... Um, principled and ethical Mm -hmm. but at the same time you're so cynical right and i'm like i'm not cynical i understand what's going on yeah right it's like when you understand that this whole thing is a facade Mm -hmm. we just talked about social media but it goes beyond social media like the whole thing's a facade it's like what do you do with that you can either be nihilistic which i had gone through where it's like what's the point or when you were like well that's why i play video games watch movies like yeah. do these things because like you have you know like at best 80 years to live right but we never think of it from that kind of point of view mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah it's like a clock that's running out yeah and I think I think that's why it's important to always do things that are like are face to face with death at least that's why I like doing it like martial arts rock climbing mm-hmm you could die. Like, you're just face-to-face with your own mortality. Okay. You know? What? what, what? No, I, yeah, just, I don't think of it that way, but... So how do you think of it? What, of life? Or yeah. I don't, just enjoy, I don't know. What else can I say? I don't know. What do you mean by face? Uh... Like, like, do you constantly think about... Do you... Maybe you don't think about it anymore, because have you ever gone through a phase where you've thought about your own demise, like, incessantly? Because maybe it's become so reflexive to you now. It's like a, it's a habit. You don't even notice you're thinking of it. Possibly. You know I, what I mean? I like, all right, remember. you're stuck in traffic and you're like, man, I could, who cares? I could die. Like, there are people in India right now that are, like, suffering more than this traffic. Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you maybe you've just, I don't know. Maybe. Me. Maybe I've already had that. But, yeah, you know, I just don't get angry at things generally. Like, there's no need to. Because, <laughs> like, why, though? Just why? I mean, just not an energy I want to waste time in, per se. I don't think like it's just... Yeah, let's just move on. I mean, I think it was more for me, because I, I did this, I think I mentioned this before, too, like only like looking into space. Like, Remember? That's what it is. That's, that's what it is I think that's you. what it that is, is for me. There we go. We've yeah. hit it. So you've done it. So you do do it. Yeah, I guess so. There we go. I was trying to figure it out. Because no, no, because that is the truth. You have to face your own mortality. And then in facing your own mortality, then you can You're right. so understand that, that, yeah, the that gravity. It, yeah. It's space for you. And it's nature. That is what it is. Because you always watch those space and nature docs. <laughs> but when you watch those things, so like one thing that they say in Graham Hancock is because of light pollution, we don't see space anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like how, how, how actually, yeah, big it is, or how it, how how grand, small you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How grand that is than compared to how small you are. Yeah. So then people are just so overly focused on their own like issues that they don't think about the fact that you're just one thing in this entire universe. I mean, I did it with whatever was there. <laughs> That's funny. What do you mean? No, I mean like the lack of. Yeah, we had the light pollution, but even with that, it still worked. But me. but it's so funny because remember I told you like because. We'd hang outside really late at night, right? And yeah, you'd, like, yeah. you'd always stare up into space. I would always stare up. And you'd be like, wow, it's so awesome. And it would I freak know. me out. Remember, I'd be so <laughs> yeah. scared. of like, yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. look up. I remember bro. that. And yeah. I was like, well, you're like, wow, it's so awesome. I, just, I can't look up. Yeah, I thought it was so amazing. But see, I didn't know why I couldn't look up until I realized, oh, it's because I'm staring into the face of death. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So for me, it was more like, yeah, how tiny we are that these problems that we have are like, like ridiculous in a sense that's exactly and see what you're doing with space i'm doing with martial arts i'm mm-hmm. doing with rock okay. climbing all right that makes more sense you, we that is what it because i was like how did you do this then because i think the only way to like to understand the gravity of the situation and to accept it and move on is to understand that your time is limited yeah but you were like oh i don't I don't actually do that. And I'm like, well, how do you do it? But then when you said space, it's like, yeah, you do, I, do it. Yeah, I was thinking about what it was, and it was, yeah. Yeah. I remember that, yeah, telling you, like, like looking up, but you wouldn't do that. Like, oh, it's you scary. Would, you it's would, scary, you would yo. Yeah. 
And I was like, yo, but it, it's so liberating in a sense. That's it's what it so, felt like but to me. For me, it felt so vast. It was like, <laughs> oh my God, we are freaking alone. Yeah. Like you don't even uh, need, you don't even need drugs at that point. You just need to look up at the sky and you're like, holy crap. Right. You know? <laughs> like just actually look at it and you're like, I am so small. Yeah. You know? I mean, that, that was it for me, and, yeah. And what they say is back then, that's why the ancients were so connected to, like, nature and the universe, because they had no light pollution. So they would just focus on space. I mean, yeah. I mean, the way you, you know, it's inevitable. You, you got to sleep on your back, so you're always looking up. True. <laughs> Didn't think about that. That's very logical. I, I just thought of that. Okay. No, but that, that's, that's very logical. Yeah, that's true. And right. then, like, when you look at it, you're like, what, what is my place in the universe? Yeah. Who do I want to be? Right. You know, and I think like, so then when they said like, they said to me like, you know, you're very principled, but you're cynical. It's like, no, I just understand what's going on, guys. You know, not I, from like an egoic I don't think the point word of is, view. I don't think cynical would be the right word. No, that's how they viewed it. Cause they're like, I was right. like, well, what's the point? Like, why do you guys care so much? And they're like, that's so cynical of you. And I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. Just understand that. Why do you care so much? Yeah, exactly. Like to had to add love, that level of emotion. Or... Yeah, you're so attached to it. Yeah, or that attached, that, yeah. You know, yeah. that like, but if you, and then it was so funny because then he's like, well, what if, what if everyone just died? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, then everyone just dies. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that happens. People die all the time. Right. And he's like, well, how would you feel if your loved one died? I was like, I'd probably feel really sad. Yeah. But, I mean, but like, it's like, die all the time. Yeah. I mean, like, like, do you think about do people you think, that died a thousand years ago, or, even a hundred years ago? Totally. Or, or, like, <laughs> well, when you say that to me, it's like, do you not think the person in the other side of the world is not feeling sad for somebody that they've just lost because of an aerial strike in the bombing? Yeah. Yeah. But not, you know, right, right, but, right. 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 And it's like, yeah, I'm sure they would feel sad. But it's like, but you didn't even think about that person until I no. told you to think yeah. about that person. Yeah. So that just shows you that we're so caught up in our own stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're ultimately focused our own on our own survival. Yeah. So it's like when you say to me that wouldn't it be sad or like you don't care, it's like, but you don't care. Right. Like you don't care if the whole world dies, like, but you don't care. Mm -hmm. I could already show you that you don't care because you don't even know about the person that's dying right now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what you don't, and ignorance is bliss. If you don't know it's happening, then who cares? Like, mm. you know, because you wouldn't be attached to nothing because you don't even know it's there. But as soon as I put that image in your mind, you've attached to it. Right. And now you're holding on for dear life. Just let that image go. Mm -hmm. You know, and I even yeah. told them, I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, when somebody dies, how come you're okay with it two or three years later? Because you're just letting go of your attachment. Yeah. But again, it goes back to a Buddhist side where it's like attachment is the root of all suffering. Because if your mind lets it go, it's, it's not in your field of awareness anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes life isn't interesting without attachments. But that's that's the duality. And and that's so funny because I said, I said the funny part is because he's like, well, we should all – the whole world should move towards a place of enlightenment or like, um, I forgot the word he used, but it was like basically enlightenment, mm -hmm. ethical understanding or something like that. And I was like, oh. all right, so basically what you're telling me is like the whole world should move towards love. But how would you know what love is without hate? So you actually need the other side mm -hmm. to know that you're in this place of love. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or else you would just, it would just be what it is. Yeah. Right? So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's like even in that saying, it's like you need because because you're like oh, but the attachment is good because mm -hmm. without attachment you can't enjoy your experience, but yeah. the attachment's also bad because if you overattach, right, you can't enjoy your experience. Yeah, that's why the Buddha said the middle way: know when to hold on, know when to let go. Yeah, true. It's so funny because it's like when you listen to this, it's like these are all ancient spiritual teachings, but at the same time, it's like these are so relevant. Yeah. You know, but when I frame it like, well, the Buddha said, now you're thinking in your mind like, mm -hmm. but these are just like, these are just human characteristics. Yeah. In some sense, it should have been common sense. But yeah. Yeah. And it was funny. That's so funny that you say common sense. And then because he's like, we started to get heated. And he's like, wait, wait, I don't think, I, I just want you to know that 
you know, we don't disagree with you. I think it's a question of semantics. Like, what you're saying right now mm-hmm. is true. Oh, no, no, he didn't say true. He's like, what you're saying right now is also what we're saying, but we're just saying it differently. I'm like, yeah, I know, because it's true. Right. So I've automatically won the argument because it's like, yeah, like, you're already agreeing with me, so why mm-hmm. don't you just look at it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that attachment is the root of all suffering. Inherently, when I tell you that, you're like, oh, that's true. But you just don't want to look at it. And that's mm-hmm. why I came up with that quote, like, don't be afraid to look deep into the heart of the dark abyss and don't blink. Right. Right, because, like, the truth hurts. It's, like, it's scary, mm-hmm. you know? To hear the truth, like, you are going to die, and that's very, very scary. Just don't blink. It's like, okay, that is what it is. Yeah. Easier said than done. One day they're going to be like, BJ, you have cancer. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> let's see how strong my teachings are today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll know in, when in practice, I guess. You, you know, it's funny. Like, I won't tell the exact story, but like, I know all this stuff, but then when you're faced with it, like, so I had to do something. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to do something. Okay, all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we both know what I'm talking about. I had to do something, and then I was so nervous to do it. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, I got to, like, <laughs> I got to do it. I tell this person, blah, 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 blah. But then, like, I'm like, but you know the truth. Yeah. You know what it is. It's like, yeah, easier said than done. Like, sure, I understand this, but it's like, but now practice it. Mm-hmm. But the funny part is when I was confronted with the situation, I used the fear that I had and I made that into my story. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you in life, you can only ride the waves. Mm. You know, it's not about controlling the waves. Like our Macklemore's line, like I can't control life, but I can control how I react to it. Right. It's a very good line. But I think it's more like you can't control the waves. You can only surf them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very true. I keep saying true a lot. Because it's the truth. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So realize that it's social media. Well, I won't, we won't go that far, but it is superficial. In a general sense, yeah. Social media. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say in life too, but we won't go down that rabbit hole. But social media in itself is like, not real. Oh, very much so. Yeah, it's like, that's why I say question everything. Yeah. I think I had that notion, not just about social media, but with anything. <laughs> Advertising in general. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But that's what that is. Yeah, for sure. Actually, what, what really intrigued me about advertising, it was Friends, um, the show Friends, and then Chandler Bing, he was like, he, had, he was working for an ad agency and he had to come up with these slogans. <laughs> and I started to realize like, oh, you can shape people's perception right. of things, yeah. just how you say them. You know, um, uh, all right. So, all right. Two underlying variables. I need you to give me money. Okay, that's that's the underlying variable. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I just need you to give me money. So the two messages are: I have cancer and I don't have money. So I need you to help support me. Yeah. In my hardship. Yeah. Alternately. I really want this pizza. I'm already full from dinner, but I just really want the pizza. Can you give me five bucks? I just need you to give me money. See what I'm saying? The action is the same, but how we get to the the end result is different. The messaging is different. The messaging, yeah. You're using emotion on the other one. Well, yeah. You're using motion in both, but it's like, it's like, how did I frame it? But framing is super important. But that's life. It's like, how do you frame every situation? Yeah. You know? But. Oh, but I guess that's what it is. Like, social media is, like, the filter upon which you can frame things. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, like, just realize that you're looking at a frame. Like what you said about advertising. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's just a filter. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. like, how do you want to perceive it? Very true. Or sometimes you don't even, if you live, so that's why they say, like, if you live unconsciously, then you're liable to be taken advantage of. But if you live with consciousness, conscious awareness, Mm -hmm. then you can make real choices. And the only difference between that, someone who's unconscious in their living and somebody who's consciously aware of their living, is someone 
who asks why. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you ask why, then you're willing to... Um, you're willing to take ownership over your life. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that was a good one. Yeah, that was. You have any final thoughts? Keep taking those selfies. <laughs> Follow. <laughs> that was good. Follow us on social media. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Till next time. We got some uh, other good topics for you. Yes. Same bad time, same bad channel. Okay. All right. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.